بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله Welcome back brothers and sisters to our second to last class in the تحفة الأطفال course Last week alhamdulillah we had completed the section on أحكام اللام الساكنة uh, and also the ahkam for idgham al-harfayn al-mutamathilayn wal-mutaqaribayn wal-mutajanisayn. Inshallah, this week in our second to last class, we'll be covering uh, approximately half of the last chapter, which is perhaps the longest chapter in the whole poem, which is the chapter of Mad, Bab al-Mad. So we'll be breaking it up into two classes this class today and then next week's class, we will finish off the chapter of Mad and conclude and conclude the poem, uh, insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, so to begin today's class, we will start off with Aqsam al-Mad with verse 35 of the poem. Qal al-Shaykh rahimahullahu ta'ala Aqsam al-Mad, the divisions of Mad. He starts off by saying in, vor- in verse 35, وَالْمَدُّ أَصْلِيٌّ وَفَرْعِيٌّ لَهُ وَسَمِّ أَوَّلًا طَبِيعِيًّا وَهُ So the Shaykh starts off by telling us that mad, the process of stretching and elongating vowels, is broken into two divisions. There's two parts to it. There's قِسْمَان to mad. The first one he calls أَصْلِي الْمَدُّ الْأَصْلِي Original mad. And the second part he calls far'i. We will translate far'i here as secondary mad. Mad that is derived or is, uh, yani comes out of mad asli. It's a far'a minhu, it's a division of it. We will translate it as secondary mad. Then he says, وَسَمِّ أَوَّلًا طَبِيعِيًّا And name this first type of mad, mad asli. You can also call it mad tabi'i or natural mad, mad tabi'i. And then he goes on to define what mad tabi'i is, and he says, Wahu ma la tawakufun lahu ala sabab. There is no reason causing this mad. Yani this mad is intrinsic, it will always be there. It is not waiting for a reason to appear. Wa la biduni hil hurufu tujitalab. And without this type of mad, you would not be able to pronounce the letters. You cannot bring forth the letters of the alphabet, such as qaf, ta, ha, ra, right? All these letters, when I just pronounce them, this natural elongation I'm doing, that's the natural mad in them. If I didn't pronounce them with mad, they wouldn't come out. I would just say ta, ta, ra, right? I have to stretch them, qaf, ta, ra, and so on. And then he further defines what mad tabi'i is, is by saying, بَلْ أَيُّ حَرْفٍ غَيْرُ هَمْزٍ أَوْ سُكُونَ جَا بَعْدَ مَدٍ فَالطَّبِيعِيَّ يَكُونَ Any letter that appears after, and or any letter that is not a hamza and is not a sukun, if it appears after, a letter of mad, then that mad is going to be tabi'i. In other words, mad tabi'i is any type of mad that does not have a hamza or sukun after it, as you will explain further in a little bit. And then he mentions the second type of mad, uh, the second type of mad by saying, The second type of mad, far'i, is reliant upon or is waiting for a reason. Ala sabab. It's waiting for a reason to be stretched beyond its natural length. Kahamzin aw sukunin musjala. Such as hamza or sukun. Yani the two things that will cause mad far'i, that will cause the mad tabi'i to be stretched and become mad far'i is a hamza or a sukun musjala in general. And there are some exceptions. You have other types of mad that are not caused by uh, hams or sukun, but those are not uh, part of our uh, explanation in this class. Now, uh, 
so then the sheikh, or then we will explain what the sheikh means uh, by these terms. So first thing, med in Arabic, the word med means to literally stretch something. Like when Allah says, well, arba madadnaha, we stretched forth the earth, right? It means to stretch or lengthen something. And there are two types of med original, which we said is called med asli. And then we also called it med tabi'i, natural med, intrinsic in a word, and then secondary med, med farad. So natural med refers to that med which is intrinsic and is never stretched beyond its normal length of two haraka. And we'll explain what two haraka is just now, but we do not stretch natural med beyond these two haraka. Secondary med is med that is caused by a secondary object such as hamza or sukun. And this med is stretched beyond the natural limit or the normal limit of two haraka. So natural med, as we said, is any time I have one of the three letters of med, alif, wow, or ya, and the letter after them in general is not a hamza or a sukun. The letter after the alif or the wow or the ya is not a hamza or sukun. So there's no secondary object acting on this med, so it will only ever be two haraka. And as we said before, Mabtabi'i is also referred to as the one that is necessary to pronounce the letters of the alphabet, like Qaf, see the Alif, Noon, see the Waw, Seen, see the Ya. The length I've stretched these letters in the middle is the length of natural mud. And if I remove the mud, then these letters would not be correct. I would say Qaf, Nun, Sin, right? Uh, so here's what secondary, or sorry, here's what natural mud looks like. So if I have the word, Qalu ya Musa. Every letter of med here is only ever being stretched for its natural length because there's no reason to go beyond that. I don't say Qalu ya Musa. There's no reason to stretch it. And what is a haraka? A haraka is basically one fatha or one bamma or one kasra. So Qalu, right? And then two haraka. That's the length of med. So if I said ba ba or bu bu or b b, that would be the same length as ba 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 bu 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 b b b. Right? When I say med tabi'i, it's referring to this natural length of two haraka. And then med far'i, secondary med, is whenever I have one of the three letters of med alif wow or ya. And then there is a hamza or sukun that appears after them, either in the next word or in the same word. Uh, and in the case of med bedal, which we'll talk about later today, it could also be that the hamza appears before the letter of med as well. So because of these secondary objects, hamza or sukun, I can stretch the med for more than two haraka. I can stretch it for four haraka or for six haraka even, according to the qira that I'm reading with. And this type of mad can appear in one word or two words. And the difference is that, uh, whereas mad tabi'i, natural mad will always be there, mad far'i, it, it, sometimes it can be there, or I have the option of not elongating it beyond its natural length. Then the Shaykh goes on in the next uh, section to explain what the conditions are for a letter of mad to be a letter of mad. So he says in verse 39, The letters of med, yani hurufuhu, referring to med, are three. So memorize them or know them. Min laf the wayin. From the expression wayin, this is a noun. The letters waw, alif, and ya. These are the only letters of med in the Arabic, in the Arabic language. Waw, alif, ya. Then he explains their conditions with the next term when he says, And this word is very important because it shows us what the conditions are for each letter of med. So the first letter here, nu, is the wow, and before it is dhamma. The second part, hi, is ya, and before it is kasra. And the last part is ha, I have alif, and before it is fatha. And he explains that here when he says in verse 40, قَبْلَ الْيَا وَقَبْلَ الْوَاوِ ضَمْ شَرْطٌ 
He says, Kasra before the ya. Uh, and wa qabla al wa wi dhamm and dhamma before the wow is a shart, is a condition. Meaning the ya has to have sukoon and before it the letter has kasra. Wow has to have sukoon and before it the letter has dhamma. That's the condition for it to be a letter of mad. Wa fathun qabla alf in yultazam. And alif will always have fatha before it because it's impossible for fatha to have anything or it's impossible for fatha to ever be anything other than sukun with fatha before it. The condition or the case of alif is that it always has sukun and always has fatha before it. And then he mentions a, a different condition for the wow and the ya specifically in verse 41 where he says, وَلِّينُوا مِنْهَا الْيَا وَوَاوٌ سُكِّنَا إِنٍ فِيْتَاحٌ قَبْلَ كُلٍ أُعْلِينَا Lean, so they're no longer a letter of mad, now they're just a letter of lean, is when I have the wow or the ya with sukoon إِنٍ فِيْتَاحٌ قَبْلَ كُلٍ and there's fatha on the letter before them, like in the word أَوْ or أَيْ there the wow and the ya have sukoon and the letter before them has fatha, right? And that means they're no longer a letter of mad. Now they are just a letter of lean. <clears throat> so again, just recapping this, three letters of mad in the Arabic language, alif, wow, and ya. The conditions are later from the word nu, hi, ha, nu, wow, sukoon, fatha before it. Hi, ya, with sukoon, kasra before it. Ha, alif with sukoon, and fatha will always be before it. So we say the letters of mad have sukoon, and the letter and the letter before them has the appropriate corresponding vowel. So dhamma for wow, kasra for ya, fatha for alif. And in this state, when they when they meet this condition of nu hiha, we refer to them as the letters of mad and lean. Huruf al mad wal lean. But if the ya or the wow, instead of having dhamma or kasra before them appropriately, if they have fatha before them, then they are only a letter of lean, not a letter of mad anymore. And then if the wow or the ya have a haraka on them, like wa or ya, then they're just a harf illa, they're not a letter of mad or a letter of lean anymore. So here are some examples of uh, harf al lean, like in the word qawl, yawm, Quraysh, Wal-Layl. Here, the Wow and the Ya have Fatha or have a Sukoon on top of them, and then Fatha on the level on the letter before them, making them just a letter of Lean. So now that we know what the conditions are for each of the letters of Med, what makes them a letter of Med, now we're going to go on to the different categories of Med Far'i. So the Sheikh begins by saying Ahkamul Med, the rules of Med. He says in verse 42, Lil Maddi Ahka Tadum. For the Mad, there are three rules that are always there. No, there are three rules that are always uh, existing for the Mad. What are these three rules? Wahyal Wujubu Walja Wazu Walu. Zoom. These three rules or these three uh, ahkam will be wujub, meaning it's obligatory, wal jawaz, uh, uh, acceptable or optional, wal luzum, necessary, meaning luzum, it will always be there. So al mad al wajib, the first one he mentions, is when I have a secondary object such as the hamza or the sukun. Um, it, it exists um, alongside the mad, either before or after, as we'll see. Uh, and performing mad here is obligatory. I mean, all of the reciters agree you have to do mad here. But there's variety in how long you have to stretch this mad. Some of them say three haraka, four haraka, five haraka, six haraka, and so on. But the point is they agree you stretch it beyond its natural length of two. The second type we said is al-mad al ja is which is where a secondary object exists, such as Hamza or Sukoon, but the Qur'a differs. So some of them say you should do med, and some of them say, no, you don't have to do any med. You can just keep it at its natural length of med, its med tabi'i level. So we call this optional, med jaiz. 
And then the final one that Sheikh uh, Jamzuri mentioned is Al Mad Al Lazim. We'll call this necessary Mad. And this is where a secondary object exists. Uh, and the length of stretching the Mad is generally uh, agreed upon. Uh, generally, we say it's six harakat for Mad Al Lazim. All the Qur'an agree that you stretch this Mad for six harakat. So now the Shaykh will mention the first category when he talked about uh, wujub, uh, obligatory med. So he says, فَوَاجِبٌ إِنْ جَاءَ هَمْزٌ بَعْدَ مَدْ Wajib med, obligatory med, is if hamza appears after the letter of med. If I have a letter of med and then immediately after it is a hamza, fi kilmatin in the same word. So I have a letter of med, and then after it is a hamza in the same word. And what do we call this type of med? This med is called med muttasil when the hamza is in the same word as the letter of med. So muttasil in Arabic means joined, something joined to something else. Whenever one of the letters of med, a, u, or e, is followed by a hamza in the same word, it will be elongated beyond its natural length. And this type of med is obligatory because all of the Quran agree that you have to do med here. There is no qari who, for example, will say, uh, They will all stretch it. Because the hamza is in the same word as the letter of med. And in our qira'ah, uh, the riwayah of Hafs an Asim in uh, Shatibiyya, from the root of Shatibiyya, which is the recitation of the majority of Muslims, uh, we say that this type of med will be elongated for four harakat. And there is variation in how long or how short this med uh, is, but for Hafs from Shatibiyya, we say we will stretch this med for four harakat. So here are some examples. وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ I have alif, a, uh, and right after it in the same word is the hamza. Ja'akum nadir. Another example, su al adab. I have wow, bumma before it, sukun on top, and then in the same word is the hamza. Stretch it for four harakat. Su al adab. Then the last example, si abihim. Yeah, with sukun, there is kasra before it. And then Hamza in the same word, stretch it for four harakat. This is mad wajib, mad wajib muttasil. Now we go on to the second type uh, of mad al mad al jaiz, or the first type of mad al jaiz, because there's three different types, as we'll see. And the Sheikh says, wajaizun maddun wa qasrun in fusil. So he says, mad jaiz is where mad. And qasr is yani jaiz. He says you can do mad or you can do qasr. Qasr means when you just recite the letter of mad with mad tabi'i, natural mad. You don't stretch it beyond its natural length. In fusil, yani if the hamza is separate from the letter of mad. What does he mean by that? Kullun bi kilmatin, meaning the hamza is in the next word. It's not in the same word as the letter of mad. So the letter of med is the last letter of one word, and the hamza is the first letter in the next word. And what do we call this type of med? We call this med munfasil. So the word munfasil in Arabic means separated. So in this case, whenever I have a letter of med, uh, u, e, and it's followed by a hamza in the next word, it can be, it's permissible to, elong, to elongate this med beyond its natural length, right? This is al-med al-ja'iz. And this type of med will only occur when I'm joining to the next word, right? So if I have a, a word like la a'budu ma ta'budun, I have the word la, then the word a'budu, hams at the beginning. If I just stop on the word la, I'm not going to say la, no, because then there's no more hamza. But when I join it to the next word, then the Hamza is there. So now the med shows up. And again, for our Qira'ah uh, of Hafs from the root of uh, Shatibiyya, which is again the recitation of uh, the majority of Muslims, we only read for four harakat. We only read for four harakat. Now.
So let's look at some uh, examples of Mad Munfasil. So here we have the word Bima Unzil. I have Alif and then Hamza becomes Bima Unzil. I have the word Qalu Amanna. Qalu Amanna. Right? This Alif here, you guys are seeing after all, this is called uh, Alif Al Fasl. It's just meant to uh, indicate that this Wow is Wow Al Jama'ah. It's not. Um, recited in the word doesn't affect the the hamza that comes after the wow and then the last example i stretch the ya because of the hamza after it but again this only applies if i'm joining so if i just stopped and said qalu, i wouldn't say qalu. why because if i stop it's like the hamza isn't there anymore only when i'm joining then the hamza shows up again and it becomes med I'll just give you guys a demonstration of uh, the difference between the Qurra. So here's the Tajweed Mus'haf for uh, Hafs, Surah Kafirun. We have the word Qul Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun. This is Mad Munfasil because even though this is written as one word in the Quran, it's actually two words. So you have to pay attention whether a word is written as one word or two, or if it's actually one or two words written as one word, like in the word Ha Ula'i. Ha is one word, ula'i is another word. Uh, also here, ya ayyuha, ya is one word, ayyuha is another word. But they write it as one word as is just tradition to do that. But we still treat it as mad munfasil. And then also here's another mad munfasil, la a'budu ma ta'budun, alif, and then hamza, the next word. Same thing here, wa la antum, same thing here, ma a'bud, wa la ana abidum, and so on. So you see in the Tajweed Mus'haf, they mark these uh, Mad Munfasil with red to make it easier for you. And they also put the Mad symbol on top, this wavy line, which means Mad, or is the word Mad, but then over time it became this wavy line to indicate Mad. But then if I go to the Tajweed Mus'haf for Qalun, see there's no more Mad. There's no more Mad on top of La A'budu, Wa La Antum, Ma A'bud, Wa La Ana. Right, because Qalun in one of his options, Imam Qalun on Nafim, one of his options, he reads with Qasr al Munfasil. He reads with natural mad of Munfasil. So he would just say, Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun, la a'budu ma ta'budun, wa la antum abiduna ma a'bud. Right, so in this Mus'haf, they don't put any mad, they don't color anything in because his option is to recite with. Uh, without med, and that's how we call it med ja is it's optional to do it or not do it. But for our root of hafs, as we said, we treat it like it's obligatory because we, uh, we follow the root of shatabiyah, and then under in, in the root of shatabiyah, med uh, munfasr is always recited uh, with med. Now we go on to the second type of med ja is the sheikh says, wa mithlu dha. And similar or like that, Madja uh, is for Mad Munfasil, in Sukunu. If the Sukun is temporary, it's not original, it's just appearing because of some, uh, some alternative reason, it's not part of the word itself. And he says, Waqfan, yani if the Sukun appears because of stopping, and for other reasons as well, but he just mentioned stopping. And he gives you two examples. So what does he mean by this? So if I have the word ta'lamun, I have a wow here in a bamma, ta'lamu, and then a noon with fatha. But if I stop on this word, waqfa, and I stop, then this fatha gets turned into a sukun. So now I have a letter of mad, and after it is sukun. And that's going to allow me to stretch the U for longer than the natural period or the natural length of two harakah. Same thing with the word nasta'in. I have ya and then kasra before it. If I stop on this word, this bamma becomes sukun, and then I can stretch this ya beyond its natural length. So al madd al arid lis sukun means that the mad is exposed to a sukun. So whenever a letter of mad, a, u, e, is followed by a non-original sukun, such as when stopping on the end of a word, 
uh, the letter of med can be elongated beyond its natural length. And this is also medja is permissible. You don't have to do it. You have the option of doing it. And as a matter of fact, all of the Qurra, all of the reciters have this option. If you stop on a letter with, uh, uh, where you stop on a word and then this sukoon appears because you stopped on that word. And this type of uh, med can appear when stopping or also when doing idgham. It doesn't appear in our qira, but in qira such as uh, Abu Amr and Yaqub, when they do idgham, uh, because a sukoon appears, they also have the option of reading with uh, med or with no med. And the general three options when stopping on the word like this, you can read with two haraka, which is called qasr or mad tabi'i. You can get four haraka or with six haraka. So examples, here we have the tajweed mushaf again. For those of you wondering why at the end of verses, they will color the letter of med orange. That's to indicate to you that you have the option of stretching this beyond its natural length. Al med al is. So I have ya and kasra before it, and then the word, uh, the noon here with kasra. But if I stop, the sukun comes on top. So I can say, natural, two haraka, or biddin, four haraka, or Biddin six haraka. Right, this is an acceptable length of med. And in general, uh, the Qur'an say that if you stretch one of your uh, med arid for a certain length, then try to keep it consistent uh, throughout the recitation. It's not obligatory, but it's good to keep your your length of med uh, consistent as you're reciting. Also here in the word sahun, same thing, I have wow, dhamma before it. If I stop, I can say sahun or sahun or sahun and stretch it for six haraka. Now we will come to the last type of uh, med al as we will say, permissible med, uh, which is um, one of the more complex types because it doesn't really apply to everyone. And the Shaykh says, أَوْ قُدِّمَ الْهَمْزُ عَلَى الْمَدِّ وَذَا بَدَلْ He says, or the Hamza will appear before the letter of Mad. So when we looked at the Mad Muttasil and the Mad Munfasil, the Hamza was coming after the letter of Mad. I had the letter of Mad and then the Hamza appeared in the same order in the next word. But in this case, the Hamza appears first, then the letter of Mad shows up. And we call this type of med, med badal. We'll explain why just now. And he gives you two examples like amanu, ka amanu wa imanan khuda. Like in the word amanu and in the word iman. So in the word amanu, although it's not written as a hamza, there's a hamza and there's an alif. So I get amanu. And in the word iman, you have the hamza, then you have, a, then you have ya, iman, right? Uh, so the word badal in Arabic means to change something. And what is it referring to when we say we are changing something? Uh, so whenever I have a hamza with sukun in Arabic and the letter before it is a hamza with a vowel, I'm going to change that hamza with sukun into a letter of mad that corresponds to the vowel on the hamza before it. So if I have like the word it, I have Hamza with Kasra, then Hamza with Sukun after it. I have it, it will become e. If I have a, it will become a. If I have o, it will become u, right? And the Arabs do this, this bedal to ease pronunciation of words, as it's easier to switch the Hamza to change it into a letter of med than it is to pronounce the Hamza with a Sukun. So every letter of med that uh, appears after a Hamza, immediately after a Hamza, uh, will be defined as med bedal, uh, and this type of med is only elongated for two haraka uh, in the qira uh, of Asim and the riway of Hafs, the one that the majority of Muslims recite in. It's only considered a natural med, two haraka. So here are some examples of med bedal happening. If I have the word adam, sukun, and then hamza before it with fatha, it will become adam. If I have the word uktu, it will become u tu. If I have the word i-manan, it will become i-manan, right? Again, this is done to ease pronunciation and that's what the bedal is referring to. It refers to me changing this hamza 
into a letter of mint. And as we said in uh, yani, virtually every single qira'a, we will only recite these for two uh, haraka. I will not say utu or imanan or adam, right? But there is one uh, qari, um, who we'll talk about just now. Here are some examples. Amanu, utu, imanan. Al-Qur'an, Yura'una, Al-Khati'een, Ra'a, Waja'u. So this first alif is Mad Muttasil, Mad and then Hamza. But the second part, U, is Mad Badal, because I have the Hamza, then the letter of Mad. Same thing here, A, Ba, E. This first one is Mad Badal, this second one is Mad Muttasil, and this last one is Mad Badal as well. So as we said, all of the Qur'an will recite this with, <clears throat> uh, with only two haraka. They will not go beyond that. But there is one Qari who is uh, Imam Warsh, uh, specifically from his riwayah of Al-Azraq, and only Al-Azraq, one of his other Turuq do this, uh, where he stretches the Mad Badal beyond its natural length. And if you ever go on YouTube and you search up some Moroccan reciters like uh, Sheikh uh, Hisham al harraz you'll hear them recite with this elongation. Uh, so, for example, he would read this ayah as, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ قَالُوا أَنُؤْمِنُوا كَمَا so you see, he stretched all these. Amen, aminu, amen again. Also here, if we read this ayah, wa idha la kulladina aman qalu amen. And any other examples that appear in the Quran as well, where I have either u or e or a, he will stretch them as an option. Uh, beyond its natural length of two. He can read without stretching. He can just say Aman and uh, Iman and Utu, for example. And then his other options are to stretch it for four haraka or to stretch it for uh, six haraka. But again, this only applies to Imam Warsh from his uh, Azraq root and none of the other Qurra ever stretch this beyond two haraka. And now we come to the last section for today, uh, which will not go into detail. That's because next week's class, the last, the, the last class, will go into more detail on this when we conclude the poem. So we're just going to touch on it briefly right now. So in this last part, uh, the Sheikh says, وَلَازِمٌ, uh, the necessary mad. Right. So we covered wajib, we covered is. now we're covering lazim. If the sukun is original, right? Remember we said in mad arab li sukun, that sukun was not original. But in mad lazim, the sukun that appears after the letter of mad, if it's original, yani it's part of the word, it doesn't disappear. Waslan wa waqfan, yani when joining and when stopping, right? Just to clarify what original means, meaning whether you're joining the word or you're stopping the word, the sukun will always be there. بعد مد طويلة after the letter of مد it appears طويلة stretch it this مد will be stretched right the Qur'a all agree to stretch this and in general they agree that you have to stretch it for six harakat the longest you can stretch it they also say six, six harakat is the equivalent of three alifs three alifs in length so um Again, we said the mad lazim, we have a letter of mad followed by an original sukun uh, in the same word um, for the qirab hafs at least. Outside of that, you may find some uh, discrepancy. Uh, the letter of mad will be elongated beyond its natural length, and we call this mad lazim. And this type of mad is always elongated for uh, six harakat, for six uh, harakat or uh, three alifs, we said. Um, just an important point to note, when we say uh, sukun, it can be a plain sukun by itself. I and mean, when I look at the word, I can see a sukun or that sukun can be part of a shadda, right? It can be part of a letter that is mushaddad. 
And that's because every letter that has shadda is actually composed of two letters. The first letter has sukun, and the second letter has the harakah, and together they make one letter with shadda. So the sukun that appears after the letter of mad that causes mad lazim can either be a plain sukun or can be part of a letter of uh, shadda or a harf mushaddad. So we'll look at some examples here and end off, inshallah. So I have the word asakha, right? I have an alif, a, uh, and then right after the alif, I have kha with shadda. And we said inside the letter of shadda, there's a sukun. So that's what's causing me to stretch this a uh, for six harakah. Asakha. Same thing with the very famous end of Surah Fatiha, wala balin. I have alif. And after it is a lam with shadda. And inside that shadda, there's a sukun, which means it's original. And I have to stretch it for uh, three alifs or three times the length of, of uh, uh, natural mud and say, wala ballin. Right? Same thing here. I have two uh, shaddas appearing with two letters of mud here. Atu haju. Right? I have the a uh, of the word atuha, and then I have ji with shadda, and there's a sukun inside that shadda. Then I have the wow, and after it is a noon with shadda, inside that noon is also a sukun. In both of these letters with shadda, there is a sukun. So I stretch the a uh, atuha, and I stretch the u atuha juni. And then here's an example without shadda. And uh, in the Qira of Hafs, this is the only, or the Riwai of Hafs on Asim. This is the only example where I have a plain sukun uh, in a word. I have the word al-ana. I have alif here, alif maddiya. And then after it is a sukun on the lam, right? It's an original sukun, it doesn't disappear. So I stretch this alif for six harakat. al an now, so this week we're not going into detail. Next week, inshallah, we'll cover med lazim uh, in all of its different categories and divisions uh, in much more detail, inshallah azza wa jal. So to conclude, uh, alhamdulillah, this week um, we finish one half of the med chapter. Again, to recap, we had finished tanween and noon at the beginning of the poem, verses 6 to 16, then the rule of noon and meme and mushaddad attain. Then al mim as sakina, then al lam as sakina, and then idram of the mutamatilain, mutaqaribain, and mutajanisain letters. Uh, and then this week we finished up to verse 57, 35 to 57, where we looked at what the conditions for the letters of mad are for the a, u, and the e, and then the ahkam of the mad, the rules of uh, wujub, al mad al wajib the rules uh, of jawaz al madd al jaiz and the rule of luzum al madd al lazim uh, and why that uh, or what the cause of that madd uh, is uh, when i'm reading those letters and when reading those words so inshallah azza wa jal uh, next week will be um, our last week uh, where we will uh, finish ahkam al madd al lazim as well as end off the poem uh, بإذن الله عز وجل uh, ورزاكم الله كل خير